morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Michael Schuster, and on today's show, we'll take a closer look at the product that is on the one hand as useful and versatile as hardly any other, but on the other hand, one of the most controversially discussed goods of modern times. You might have guessed it. Today's episode of How About Logistics will be all about plastic bags. We'll start off by analyzing how they are made and what the supply chain looks like, followed by a closer look at the involved information technology system. And to conclude today's show, we will zoom in on the recycling process and other future challenges of the industry. In the basic sense, a supply chain can be seen as a network of organizations that are involved in both up and downstream direction in the different processes and activities of value creation of products and services. Crude oil and natural gas, a few of the most important constituent parts of many different types of plastics and their extraction is the first element of the plastic bag supply chain. Pipelines convey them from the production plant into refineries where they get heated up to very high temperatures in order to isolate polyethylene molecules, which are then further transported to the extruding company in the form of small resin beads. Plastic bags are usually made from so-called HDPE, high density polyethylene. The extruding company, which is a, considered a first tier supplier, then transforms those small resin beads into an endless tube in a process called blown film extrusion and ships those rolls of tube to the actual bag manufacturer. There, a machine cuts the bags to length, punches out the handle holes and bonds the open edges together. The entire production process is fully automated and streamlined, which allows large batch production. Considering the fact that roughly 1 million plastic bags are used every minute around the world, automation in the production process is inevitable. The manufacturers then supply their customers, which are retail stores and warehouses, before the bags finally reach the end of the supply chain and are used by the end consumer. As mentioned, highly automated production systems are used in the manufacturing process, which facilitates the usage of modern IT systems. An effective warehouse management system could ensure minimum stock levels optimize both storage and retrieval processes. Apart from that, so-called transaction processing systems are used for improved communication along the entire length of the supply chain. Electronic data interchange, for example, allows for simple order placements to suppliers and is even more beneficial to the business if it's fully integrated into the warehouse management system as stock keeping could be fully automated. Speaking of the supply chain, as you can see in the graphic, the journey of the plastic bag seems to end once it has reached the end consumer. However, it's not enough to only focus on the forward flow of goods and materials, but increasing importance must be given to their backward flow, which is commonly referred to as reverse logistics. Plastic bags seem to pose a particular problem as they cannot be recycled along other plastic products, as they will clog up machinery due to their size and shape. Apart from that, they are often contaminated with other substances such as shopping receipts which need to be removed before the actual recycling process. Those additional efforts kept recycling rates insufficiently low in the past. Researchers estimate that only 5-10% to of all plastic bags are actually reprocessed. Those numbers need to increase as soon as possible if one considers that the average usage, usage time is only around 20 minutes per piece. The effects of insufficient recycling can already be recognized today. The problem with plastic is that it's non-biodegradable, which means that it only breaks down into very small parts, but it's never decomposed entirely. Those small parts are commonly referred to as microplastics, and once they end up in our environment, they will basically remain there forever and pose a great danger to our wildlife. Researchers estimate that by 2050, the overall mass of plastic in our ocean will exceed the amount of fish. Effective recycling systems and the usage of reusable shopping bags would noticeably reduce the introduction of garbage into our environment. Another challenge will be that plastic bags almost exclusively consist of non-renewable raw materials. Oil and gas might at some point get too expensive for bag manufacturers as consumers are not willing to pay a high price for a product that has a relatively low perceived value. Well, there you have it. I hope this quick presentation could give you some insights into the plastic bag industry and some challenges it will have to face in the near future. I'm looking forward to hearing about your opinions on this topic down in the comment section below. Thank you very much for tuning in and see you in the next episode.